Hello and welcome to Reboot Theater. I'm your host, The Invisible Man. Today we're talking about Spider-Man. Yes, ever since I was a kid, Spider-Man has been my favorite superhero. Why? Well, partly because he was the first kid superhero that didn't need an older mentor to guide him. Before Spider-Man, all kid superheroes were sidekicks to adult heroes. But Spider-Man proved that he didn't need a mentor to hold his hand. He was independent. When you're a kid, that is the coolest thing. He can do anything he wants. He gets to go all over the city with no one telling him what to do. On top of that, he's got super strength, wall sticking ability, he can jump like nobody's business, and he's got web shooters. How cool would it be to own those? But as great as the web slinger's comic career is going, his recent TV series and films have been either too dark, too campy, or made on a budget of five cents. As of the making of this video, it has been eight years since I've seen a good Spider-Man series, and 13 years since I've seen a good movie. So let's hope this next one can break the mold. This is Spider-Man Homecoming. Well, it's that time again. Sony has to make one of these every few years, otherwise they lose the rights to the wall crawler and he goes back to Marvel. Would that really be so bad? Now, don't get me wrong. There was a time when Sony did Spider-Man right. Starting with their first film in 2002, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man was a captivating thrill ride of epic proportions. And Sony continued that streak with Spider-Man 2, which had just as much high-flying action and comic book zaniness, as well as a pretty deep story arc about the inner struggle that a hero must face. So now Sony's on a hot streak. Nothing can stop them now, right? Wrong. This movie was the beginning of the end. Spider-Man 3 was an absolute train wreck. This one focused on a symbiote that turned Spider-Man evil. I mean, just a complete jackass. Add the fact that they had three villains fighting for screen time and Spider-Man becoming extremely violent. Good riddance. And you've got a recipe for disaster. It received mixed reviews from critics, and among fans it remains one of the most hated comic book movies ever. So Sony decides, okay, let's reboot the franchise. We'll get a new director, new actors, and change the tone of everything. The result was something even more like Spider-Man 3. While the Raimi films were bright and colorful, like the original comics, The Amazing Spider-Man was a much darker take on the Web Slinger, like the Ultimate comics. And Peter was even more of a jackass, just being himself! Where are you going? Peter, come back here, please. So after two more dark and gritty movies, Sony decided to reboot the franchise again and finally put Spider-Man in the MCU. All right, here we go, a fresh start. We got his look right, his personality right, his web shooters right, even his sense of humor right. Now all we need is the suit and we'll have everything we need for a good Spider-Man. <laughs> You're kidding, right? Ugh. Guys, you were so close! You just had to do that, didn't you? You had to make the suit, CG! It looks so fake! Still, Spider-Man was one of the best parts of Civil War. And Tom Holland did a pretty good job playing him. So with fingers crossed, let's see what he can do with his first solo movie. This is Spider-Man Homecoming. The movie opens with Adrian Toomes, played by Michael Keaton, cleaning up debris with his salvage company after the Battle of New York but the Department of Damage Control shows up, takes over the cleanup, and he's told he won't receive payment. Angry at the one percenters for always getting in the way of his business, Keaton decides to outfit the alien technology they already recovered and sell weapons on the black market. We then fast forward eight years later to the present day. Wait, what? The Avengers came out five years ago. Where do you come up with eight? Does this take place in the future, but only by three years? That's not very impressive, guys, what up? We then meet our lead, Peter Parker, played by Tom Holland, and he gets us up to speed through- Oh, God, no. New York. Queens. It's a rough borough, but hey, it's home. Who are you talking to? No one. Oh, found footage. You're serious? Found footage? Why does everyone think that's artsy? I'm paying to see a professional movie, not a vlog for a kid on vacation. Okay, so the craziest thing just happened, right? I got in a fight with Captain America and I stole his shield and I threw it at him and I... Uh, he's big now, I gotta go. Peter gets us up to speed with the events of the last film, and then after the airport battle, he gets taken home to wait until Tony Stark needs him again. So Peter dedicates all his free time to becoming Spider-Man, constantly texting Happy to see if Stark needs his help. 
And here's my biggest problem with this. The whole essence of Spider-Man's identity is that he's still a kid. He always takes time to be a kid. He's got a lot of responsibilities like school, extracurriculars, and of course, crime fighting. And with all that, he somehow still finds the time to have fun. But in this film, he's just obsessed with crime fighting! He quits the decathlon team, he doesn't have time for his friends, and if Stark offered to make him a full-time Avenger, he would drop out of school tomorrow! Dude, come on! You're only young once! Spare some time for fun stuff! He doesn't even have time for arbitrary love interest Liz, played by Laura Harrier, or Michelle Jones, played by Zendaya. I'm not sure why, but there's just something so likable about her. She reminds you of Ellie Sheedy in The Breakfast Club. You guys are losers. But then why do you sit with us? Because I don't have any friends. She doesn't really care about anything, but there's just something really attractive about her. Sub penis, Parker! <laughs> oh, is this douche nozzle? Flash. It's the product of sine of the angle and gravity divided by the mass. That is Flash Thompson? You can't be serious! Flash is a huge jock! And he's so dumb that he got held back a grade! Now he's smart and skinny? What kind of miscasting is that? Later that night, Spider-Man stops an ATM robbery and discovers the bad guys have weapons that aren't exactly street legal. <laughs> No, no, of course that's not the end of it. After thwarting the robbery, Peter goes back home to his aunt, Marissa Tomei. Get it? Aunt May? Aunt Tomei? <laughs> yeah, that was lame. Anyway, he sneaks back into his room, and we meet our comic relief character, Ned. You're the Spider-Man. I'm not. I'm not. You were on the ceiling. No. Quick, just tell him he's on LSD and punch him in the throat. Oh, of course he entrusts Ned with his secret, and he becomes that annoying sidekick that every superhero has, but doesn't want to admit they have. Can I be your guy in the chair? What? You know how there's a guy with the headset telling the other guy where to go? Ned, I don't need a guy in the chair. So then Peter and Ned head to Liz's party, where Ned and his big mouth promised Spider-Man would make an appearance. Oh great, here we go again. The old pretending to be two different people at the same party gag. Really? Didn't we retire that cliche back in the 90s? But then trouble arises and Peter realizes... Duty calls. So he ditches the party to find one of Keaton's goons selling weapons similar to the kind he saw at the bank robbery. Spider-Man tries to stop him, but finds out he's actually terrible at this. Take a shortcut. After racking up thousands of property damage and maiming a group of helpless children, he then gets snatched up by Keaton, who is reprising his role as Birdman. Well, okay, officially he's the Vulture. But as long as MK is playing him, I'm calling him Birdman. So this is the unexpected virtue of ignorance. Oh, nope, that is. So Spidey falls to his doom, gets tangled in his own parachute, and nearly drowns in a lake. Wow. That is so lame. Luckily, Iron Man got an alert that he was in danger, and he pulls him out of the lake. Stark tells him to stay away from the bad guys and let him handle it, yada yada yada, the exact same speech you heard in every underdog story ever. You know what? I think I see what's wrong with this picture. Spider-Man was always independent in the comics. He didn't need anyone to hold his hand. He just figured things out on his own. And yes, he did make a lot of mistakes. But never anything this stupid! Back in the villain's secret lab, Keaton is unhappy that his sales guy attracted Spider-Man's attention, so he goes Julianne Moore on his ass! Oh. 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 I thought this was the anti-gravity gun. What? No, that's that one. Oopsies! I really gotta get a label maker. During the fight, Peter managed to snatch a weapon that was left behind. Ned puts the plot device in his pocket, even though he has no use for it at the moment, and the bad guys show up looking for it. Peter puts a tracking device on one of them, and he realizes that the bad guys are stationed in Maryland, right near where the decathlon is conveniently being held in DC. So Peter rejoins the team, as if they'll actually take him back at the drop of a hat. You can't just quit on us, stroll up, and be welcomed back by everyone. Hey, welcome back, Peter! Apparently they will! And he hitches a ride with them to Washington. That night, Peter and Ned disconnect the suit's tracker so Stark won't follow them, and disable the training wheels protocol. I really don't think this is a good idea. Come on. Okay, no. Turns out disabling the training wheels unlocks an AI in the suit named Karen, voiced by Jennifer Connelly, whom you may remember from her last Marvel movie. No! You 
you got the deer in headlights from Ang Lee's Hulk to be in this movie? Why? But to be fair, Connolly does this role a lot better. In fact, she actually has more personality than Peter does most of the time. Good evening, Peter. Hello? Hello? Congratulations on completing the rigorous training wheels protocol and gaining access to your suit's full capabilities. Ah, thank you. So Peter plans to sneak out and fight the bad guys, but gets stopped by Liz in the hallway. Hey, Liz. Perfect timing. We're gonna go swimming. Hey, Peter. A rebellious group activity the day before competition is good for morale. Hmm? Um, well, I read that in a TED Talk, so I, I heard it in a TED Talk. Okay, dude, I know you're on a mission right now, but the pretty girl you have a crush on just invited you to go swimming with her. Take the deal! The bad guys will be there in the morning, and as long as you have that tracker on them, you're not gonna lose them. This is a perfect example of what Spider-Man is all about. He doesn't just fight crime, he also takes some time to live his own life. The real Spider-Man would drop what he's doing right now and go join Liz at the pool. So what does Peter do? He completely ignores the awesome fun and leaves to hunt down the bad guys. Are you kidding me? You're a kid! Just enjoy being a kid for once! Spider-Man tracks the bad guys down and plans to take them out, but then he proves that he has no idea what he's doing. Activating instant kill. No, 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 I don't want to kill anybody. Deactivating instant kill. Oh. Shoot lady, what's wrong with my web shooters? Rapid fire is the default for enhanced combat mode. Why would I need rapid fire? That one. Great choice. Would you like me to set this as your new default? No, no, no. Push that in. Right here. No, no, there. This one right here. Yeah, push. Oh, okay, okay. This is a prank, right? There's no way that's the real Spider-Man. There has to be some kid in cheap cosplay, right? Come on, where's the real guy? Uh, apparently locked in the back of a truck. So he's transported to a weapons vault where instead of coming up with an escape plan, he lies down and talks to Karen for 37 minutes. And what if she's expecting someone like Tony Stark? I mean, imagine how disappointed she'd be when she sees me. Well, if I were her, I wouldn't be disappointed at all. Thanks, Karen. Dude, you are Spider-Man! Crawl up the wall, pry open an air vent, and you found your way out! Why is this so hard for you? Meanwhile, the decathlon goes on without Peter, and he realizes the power core Ned has is an unstable grenade. So he waits until morning, when someone opens the door to let him out, and he rushes over to the Washington Monument before the x-ray scanners can trigger it. Unfortunately, he doesn't get there in time, and the bomb explodes. <laughs> and all the kids are dead. What? For the sake of the plot, they are not dead, even though that definitely should have killed them. The kids are trapped in an elevator, about to fall to their dooms. Wait, have we done this one before? Uh, I'm sure it'll work out better this time. Spider just never been this high before. Spider Man is afraid of heights. Spider Man! is afraid of- Do these writers even read their own script? Spider-Man climbs up the monument to save them, but gets targeted by the police, who see him as a threat. Spider-Man, state your true identity! And if it's not Tobey Maguire, we will squash you like the bug you are! Spider-Man gives them the slip by doing a pretty cool stunt, and gives us diehard fans something we haven't seen in the other movies. The underarm webs from the original comics! Alright, I feel ya! Spider-Man saves everyone, including Liz, and they're reunited and it feels so good. Granted, a national monument has been destroyed, but who cares? The day is saved! Yay! Then everyone returns home, and Peter interrogates one of Keaton's customers. Would you like me to activate the enhanced interrogation protocol? Uh, yeah. Uh, hey. I I know what a girl sound like. I'm not a girl, I'm a boy. I can't, I can't, I can't. What are you serious? Okay, dude, just having a voice changer does not make you Darth Vader. It makes you Kylo Ren. You know, the poor man's Darth Vader. What do you guys think of Kylo Ren? Kylo Ren is a punk bitch. <laughs> Oh no, he's choking on food. Stupid! Dude, Matt straight up sucks. How is this supposed to intimidate anyone? I can't stop laughing at how ridiculous this voice is! Peter learns that Keaton is selling weapons on the Staten Island Ferry to Mac Gargan. And he's got a scorpion tattoo. Think they're foreshadowing anything? Spider-Man captures Gargan, but Birdman splits the ferry in half and escapes. 
Spider-Man tries to save the boat from sinking, but apparently he's pretty weak compared to his predecessors. Seriously, when McGuire did this scene, he had all the force of a speeding train behind him! And there was a lot to be lost if the train crashed! But come on! I'm sure the boat has life jackets! And it's a warm spring day! It's not like people will freeze to death if they fall in! Really, I'd be more concerned about the people's cars! How do you explain that to the insurance company? Because my car was totaled! Yes, but the water damage wasn't my fault! A spider wearing a leotard showed up, then this crazy old bird turned the boat into a hot dog bun, and now my car is at the bottom of the Hudson River! Hello? Hello? Luckily, like a good neighbor, Iron Man is there, and he fixes the boat for Spidey. Afterwards, he berates him for not being responsible with the suit, as well as disobeying him by going after Keaton. What if somebody had died tonight? Different story, right? Because that's on you. Okay, it's not working out. I'm gonna need the suit back. Please, this is all I have. I'm nothing without this suit. If you're nothing without this suit, then you shouldn't have it. So Peter decides to take a break from being Spider-Man so he can just focus on being a kid. Again. Wrong! Spider-Man is not one or the other. He's supposed to be both! He fights crime and lives a normal kid's life. He finds a way to make it all work. But now he just wants to be 100% normal? This is Spider-Man 2 all over again! Can't they come up with an original plot for once? Just once! Please! And to quote CinemaSins... Roll credits. He asks Liz to go to the dance with him, she agrees, and he shows up to- Oh my god. Keaton was Liz's dad the whole time?! <laughs> oh boy, this is like something out of an 80s sitcom! He must be Peter. I'm Liz's dad. Uh-oh, how will Peter get out of this one? Will Keaton find out he's Spider-Man? Will Liz find out her dad is Birdman? Will Ned ever get to be Alfred? Will Marissa and May do anything of interest? Will Michelle get her own spin-off movie? Stay tuned for more! Peter screws the pooch! Well, as you probably guessed, Keaton does figure out Peter is Spider-Man, and he warns him not to interfere with his plans. But in a strange twist, he actually shows some humanity here. In exchange for saving his daughter's life, he agrees not to do anything to him, and says he won't expose Peter as Spider-Man because he's an honorable man. You walk through those doors, you forget any of this happened. And don't you ever interfere with my business again. But Peter says, no, I'm not gonna let you hurt anyone else. And then he clobbers Keaton, who is powerless without his armor, and sends him to jail, and he doesn't do any of that, does he? He just lets this dangerous criminal go free. What? Peter realizes Keaton is going to rob a plane transporting weapons from Avengers Tower. Well, no big deal, I'm sure Iron Man can handle that. After all, it is his building. He'll probably be there anyway. Just give him a call and... Nope. He's got something to prove? Oh, okay. Well, that changes everything. So Peter ditches Liz again, just so he can stop her dad from stealing more alien tech, even though he had the PERFECT OPPORTUNITY to stop him earlier! But we need a climax somehow, so he turns into Ghetto Spider-Man and tracks down Keaton at his evil lair. Keaton lays a trap for Spider-Man by crumbling the warehouse down on top of him. He then leaves Spider-Man to die and goes on with his heist. I'm down here! I'm stuck! I'm stuck! I can't move! I can't... Oh, come on! PROPORTIONAL STRENGTH OF A SPIDER! That concrete should be like styrofoam to him! You're actually groaning from the weight of this?! To put this in perspective, in the comics, Spider-Man could toss the thing like a feather. In the Raimi movies, he could hold an entire train going at full speed. But here? <laughs> you gotta be kidding me! This is the lamest Spider-Man ever! He's not the most annoying ever. That title goes to Drake Bell. But this is a sad excuse for the awesomeness that is Spider-Man. He wasn't this way in Civil War. Why'd you make him so wimpy in this one? Eventually, though, he manages to get free and gets to Avengers Tower just in time to stop Birdman. You know, I really want to enjoy this. I really wish I could say this was cool, but it's just not. It's a really stupid climax for a really boring movie. Spider-Man stops Birdman, then wraps him up with a neat little bow for the police to pick up. So, after stopping just one robbery, do you think Stark would completely change his mind and offer him a spot in the Avengers now? Well, of course he would! I'm surprised he doesn't get a signing bonus! Oh wait, he does! Yeah! Stark offers him the Iron Spider suit so he can cause even more chaos than he did with his old one. 
whoop de freaking do No, no, I'm sorry. Wrong! Nothing this kid has done has proven to me that he's worthy of that thing! He blows off his friends, he has no respect for authority, he's always losing his backpack and making his aunt buy him a new one. That's five. He's terrible at saving people, he steals random alien tech that he doesn't know what it is, blows up buildings when he finds out, and to top it all off, he's as weak as a snail with a limp! He can't even control the powers he has now! What makes you think he's worthy of more? This is not the person that belongs inside that suit. He'll probably nuke the Earth before Thanos even gets there! Fortunately, even Peter realizes this, as he declines Stark's offer to become a full-fledged Avenger. Uh, Happy will take you home. That was a test, right? There's uh, nobody back there? Yes, Peter. It was a test. And you passed. But Tony Stark failed miserably. Where's the kid? Gwyneth Paltrow! <clears throat> Sorry, I just got a little excited there, seeing someone actually interesting in this movie. So yes, Stark was not kidding when he said he held a press conference to sign on Spider-Man as an Avenger. This guy is a piece of work. Peter goes back to school, learns that Liz is moving away, and Michelle gets promoted to decathlon team captain. Uh, thank you. M my friends call me MJ. MJ? You mean like, Mary Jane? I knew there was a reason I liked this girl! She was supposed to be the love interest all along! And what a refreshing change of pace that she's not a complete tool. She's actually a likable character who can think for herself! Then Peter returns home, where Stark has left him a little care package. His original suit. But one question remains. Whatever happened to Aunt Tomei? What the f- <laughs> Okay, that's how you end the movie. A split second away from an R rating. What the f- Cut! Ooh, that was a close one. And that was Spider-Man Homecoming. Insert pun here. I gotta be honest, guys, this did not do it for me. I know Spider-Man is better than this. Most of this movie is really boring and barely shows off any of Spider-Man acting like Spider-Man. He also isn't as chatty as he was in Civil War, which is a shame because I was really looking forward to Spidey's brand of quick-witted humor. I thought Tom Holland was going to bring that to the character, but apparently not. Throughout the whole movie, he's either obsessed with becoming an Avenger, acting like an antisocial loser, or just plain doing nothing! It's boring to watch him do nothing! If you need to wait for him to do something, switch to a different character! Show what Tony Stark is doing, which would tell us more about how he feels about Spider-Man. But instead we just get boring dialogue in a warehouse? Why? Show us Ned! Show us Aunt Tomei! Show us MJ! I can't tell you how much of a likable character MJ is in this. Even though she's incredibly introverted and closed off, she somehow is more of a personality than Peter does. Really, think about that. The guy with super spider powers is less interesting than this girl. I, I know, I just like coming here to sketch people in crisis. <laughs> it's you. Yes, I mean it. Discount Ali Sheedy is actually stealing the show from Spider-Man in his own movie. Kind of like Wonder Woman in BVS. Bottom line, Spider-Man deserves better. He deserves cooler fight scenes. He deserves the chance to be a kid. He deserves an interesting personality. And most of all, he deserves not to be portrayed as a wimp. Sure, you could argue that he's still learning how to use his powers, but even then he should still be a little bit stronger than this. Wow, I really suck. When I watch this movie, I don't see Spider-Man. I see a kid playing dress-up and pretending to be Spider-Man. I certainly hope they improve this because the movie itself isn't all that bad. For all its terrible portrayals, I feel like there is a good movie trying to get out. But this is far from the Spider-Man we were promised. It's not an awful film, but there's a lot of room for improvement. But the good news is, it can only get better from here. I'm the Invisible Man, and when Sony reboots Spider-Man again, I've got it covered.